Hi guys, it's coming to the year end and I thought I'd share with you my latest learnings on using AWS SQS, simple queuing service or something like that. I have a video where I initially introduced it and what the gotcha back, I thought you could have multiple consumers, but no, you, you should just have one consumer. Why am I using SQS? I mean, it is an AWS only thing and there's going to be some lock-in, but I'm of the opinion that that if something takes a bit of time, which some inevitable work does, you're going to need SQS because I, I'm a big Golang fan. It's it's quite easy to write a queue in Golang and control it in a variety of ways. You know, I have one worker, I have multiple workers. But since my Golang runs in a serverless environment, a, a very temporary, ephemeral environment where it can get cut at any time. Uh, if that Golang is managing a queue and it just gets cut at any time, then it's like pretty dumb. So you want to use, sadly, a queuing service like what your cloud host provides, AWS SQS in my instance. The work that, that required some time was some complex changes to the database. Um, initially there were, you know, there was a SQL procedure that took up to 10 seconds. And, um, and initially that, that even had race conditions. So I set up a queue, set it up with a Lambda trigger right here. And, and initially, since, since it was su suffering from race conditions, it wasn't working because, um, because by default, when you attach a Lambda to a queue, Amazon automatically scales that so that it fires off multiple, if, you know, if there's a hundred messages in the queue, it could just fire off 10 lambdas to, to tackle that queue. So what, what you, if you want one worker, you have to go down here and set reserve currency as one, if you, if you, if you want one, one worker, if you have race conditions, for example. Thankfully, I think we've resolved them. So now we let AWS scale the lambdas to, to, to do the work that, that's in the queue. Awesome. Another thing that caught me off guard was that by default, um, your if, if the visibility timeout is somehow a magically, I, ha I had a support group. If it's some, if it's somehow, if your if the timeout is somehow less than six times of the, your lambda timeout, you can get into the situation where. The, the lambda is sort of throttled and it goes into the dead letter queue. Dead letter queue in SQS terms is like, oh, we can't process this thing We're going into the dead, the dead letter queue. And in, in my instance here, total fail is, total, is, is dead letter queue. And what's even more irritating is that I don't know how to easily get messages from the, from the total fail back into the invites. All I'm doing basically is just restarting the, the, the work because because there's another service that kind of knows what the work's to be done. So I just restarted it and ignore the, what, whatever happens in total fail. So you basically have to carefully configure all these little settings here. Uh, you have to be wary of them when, when you're working with Lambda. And you have to be wary, and, 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 you, and I recommend initially to closely monitor your queue until you have a good feeling about it, like I do now, kind of. When queuing onto SQS, it does a request for each, each queue. If you have lots and lots of messages, you want to batch them, but you can only batch 10 at a time. So there's a, there's a there's something to watch out for. There's some things I still don't quite understand about SQS. Sometimes the messages are, are in flight, and I think this comes down to the visibility, but but if they, if they fail for some reason, which they shouldn't, they can get stuck in this messages in flight for quite a long time. You just gotta be patient, I think. Uh, I, I'm not too sure how to to control that. But I, in some ways, the SQS is more vis gives you a lot more visibility than say, if you were just doing your own queue in Golang. So so again, just to remind you that if you if you had race conditions, you can set one, uh, one worker. And if you wanted, you know, just 10 workers, you can just set 10 workers. It's very easy to toggle things. It's quite nice, actually. In my in my case, these SQS messages were kicking off a lambda to do something with the database. The trouble is, is that the 
the query initially was extremely inefficient and it was actually creating a huge amount of load on the database and basically kicking the, the, the database out of action. So you've got to be a bit conscious because if you use SQS with, with Lambda at the default settings and it goes concur concurrently, it will hit your database really hard if, if, you're not, if you don't watch out for it because it's automatically scaling. And unfortunately, databases like RDS, they don't scale very well. You know, they only scale vertically, I think the term is. You gotta be you gotta be conscious. Your workers can scale, your database can't. I did mention the monitoring of the queue is quite good, but you gotta be wary that you can't easily see the messages sometimes. Um, the order is not preserved. So you're just working with total. So don't expect to be able to examine the queue or something like that. You can't really do that. So it's a bit limited. Since you can't really examine the queue, you, your your worker needs to be, what do you call it, idempotent. You want it so that you have some input and you have a worker and you have some output. If it runs again and again, just mistakenly, it doesn't mess up the output. That's basically, basically how I, is, is idempotency. Your worker needs to have, or your data, or whatever, has to have that property because it is possible for the same thing to be run several times for you know just accidentally or what have you so just be wary of that and ideally you have code like I, like we do that basically checks if it's already been processed in the database before actually doing carrying out that work and 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 uh, making that transaction i hope you got something out of that i hope you know a little bit more about sqs and you learned about it in a less painful way than i did so please like the video please subscribe for more and um have a good Christmas, guys. See ya.